Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Minister Tina. Amen. 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 I surrender all to you, withholding nothing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord some praise. Hey, because he's worthy. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Glory to God. You may be seated. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, because I thank God for saving me. Truly, God has really been good to me, saints. I want to give honor to God, who is my life, and I give honor to the angel of this house in his absence, to the, to the first lady. Praise God. She is a first lady. You know, I mean, you all have, I mean, she is, she's called to be a first lady. She won me. As a matter of fact, the women in this church, when I came here um, a couple years ago, just won me over. I just really fell in love with them. I went back home telling my church about this church because it is an oasis of love. That's what we call our church. And I can feel that same love here. Just when you walk through the doors and you don't know, it just, you don't feel that everywhere. It's not everywhere, I'm telling you. But it is here and I thank God for that. I want to give honor and thank God for Elder Lynn Williams who invited me. Thank you for being a visionary. Amen. Because truly when God gives you a vision, his anointing is on it. And every year it's going to go higher. And this conference is going to go higher and higher every year. Praise God. I'm just excited about the word. There is a rhema word from the Lord for you. But I also want to just share just a couple of things with you. Because there's some of you mothers here in the house. And you have sons and you have daughters and you have really um you haven't given up on them but you're just disappointed and it looks like they're just totally out there and never going to be able to come back but I'm here to tell you my son who is a deacon in my church he was out there he was out there on drugs he was an alcoholic he was, I mean, and probably doing a lot of things because a lot of times he said, Ma, you don't know the half of it. But I prayed for him and I didn't give up. My son is a deacon in the church, preaching deacon, preaching sermons, been in the church three years and preaching better than some people that have been preaching for years. It's totally sold out to the Lord. Totally sold out. And really just such a blessing to me in the ministry. So just wait on God. That's a word for someone here, some mother here tonight. Just wait on God. Don't give up because he's no, God is no respect of persons. And if he did it for me, he will do it for you. Amen. There's just so many things that sometimes we, it, it, the sister was singing earlier, don't give up. Don't give up. You cannot give up up. You've got to hold on. And I'm telling you, if he, said, if he brought you to it, he will bring you through it. There's nothing too hard for God. I'm just talking right now. But I, I'm going to get into the message. Just, just hold on. 
I'm letting the Holy Spirit flow through me. See, I can't do nothing without him. I can't do nothing without him. But I want this, let me tell you, tonight, this is going to be a deliverance message. This is going to be a deliverance um, service. There is, see, we have the wrong idea in our minds about what deliverance is. We think that it's throwing up in the bags and, you know, and the demons running out. Well, you know what? I'm here to tell you, it is that. I've done that. I've seen that too, and I've been a partaker of working in that ministry too. It is that. But that's not the only thing. Because my Bible tells me Jesus taught them, and the spirits were cast out. And I'm telling you, the word that's going to go forth tonight, there's going to be deliverance in the house. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's deliverance in the house. There is deliverance in the house. Because we didn't come to look cute. We can look cute anytime. We came, you know, you say, well, you know, you free. You might feel like you're free. But you will be surprised when the word goes forth in the anointing that destroys the yoke. You'll find out that there's some areas that you were not free in. I can say that for myself. I would say, you know, I wasn't always like you all. I wasn't always uh, totally committed. I was in the church for a long time, First Lady, before I really got serious with the Lord. Oh, I came to church, and oh, you talking about wear some hats? Oh, and just sharp, and just coming to church every Sunday, needing deliverance, was not delivered, had not surrendered, was not committed. But I knew how to go to church. I was so glad when the Lord delivered me of just coming to church. And I surrendered into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I no longer have a church mentality. I didn't come here tonight with a church mentality. I can't preach with a church mentality. The message that I give out is for the kingdom. And when you hear it tonight, you can take it to somebody else. I don't care what denomination they are. It's the kingdom message because you got to be a kingdom-minded person. Church-minded people come to church when they feel like it. Church-minded people come to church on Sundays, but they don't want to come back on Wednesday night. There are, don't be a Sunday, just a Sunday uh, Christian, a Sunday morning Christian. You can't really get the word on like you do on Sunday. You can't answer questions. You can't ask questions. You know, they're up there preaching. You look silly. You're up there trying to raise your hand, trying to answer questions. But on Wednesday night, you can really get the meat of things. You can get in the but, but look. Everybody doesn't want to come on Wednesday. Everybody doesn't want the meat. Some people just satisfied coming on Sundays. But I'm telling you, when you really get totally sold out for Jesus, you not only come on Sundays, you come on Wednesdays, you call on the phone and say, are you having service tonight? When you really get free. But we're going to get free. Everybody in here is going to be free tonight said the Lord because I can't set you free but he can because he came to set the captives free amen uh, one more thing before I get into the word I want to tell you she mentioned I, I had written another book it's called the struggle is over no more religion and we do we have some copies out there on the table. If you don't get it tonight, you can get it on Amazon.com. God inspired me to write that book because many people are not free and trying to have a religion. Religion is a system. But God wants us to have a relationship with Him. And so I want you all to get that book, support me and get the book. It will set you, you will never be the same. You will never be the same. I'm getting so many good testimonies from people reading that book. Um, God even let me know. He said, you're going to go through persecution for this one. He said, but don't worry, I got your back. 
I said, well, Lord, what did he say? Well, he said, this book. He said, you know how Paul went through persecution when he preached on grace? He said, you're going to go through with this one. He said, but everybody that reads it, the anointing is going to set them free. He said, don't you worry about the persecution. He said, because the battle is not in you, and you don't have to fight it. So, just, those are just a few nuggets. Amen. Y'all don't have to pay for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bring you greetings from worshipers interceding for Excellence Church located in uh, downtown Decatur, Georgia. And uh, I always tell people we're not a mega, we're a mega church, not mega people, but mega power. And once you come, you will come back again. Amen. Now, it's, uh, our church is not for everybody. I'm not, you know, it's just not. The church, when you teach the truth, the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Make you free. But you got to know the truth. But everybody doesn't want to know the truth. And if you don't want to know the truth and you come to church that's teaching the truth, you're not going to want to stay. Amen. That's just the way it is. If you want a church that's um, tickling your ears, it's not ours. And I could tell just by the way this church is that it's not here. I don't have to be here. I already know that they don't teach messages that just tickle your ears. Amen. I could tell. I wouldn't be here if they did. Because the Lord would have told me, nah, you don't want to go there. So once again, I thank you all for having me back again, and I'm going to go ahead and get into the word. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to pray and um, then ask you all to turn in your Bibles to the scripture. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done in this conference so far, Father God. I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. I thank you, Lord, that even now as I stand here, Father God, I can feel the anointing in the air. I can feel, Father God, there's a healing anointing here. There's an anointing here for miracles, even right now, Father God, because of everything that has already gone forth. The anointed singing, the anointed dancing, the anointed remarks and words. And I thank you, Father God, for allowing me to be a part of this great conference. I do not count it lightly, Lord. And I thank you for how you're going to use me tonight. Bless your people. These are your sheep. These are your people, Lord. Hi, Honorable and I know you did not bring me all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, Lord, just to tickle their ears. So I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Isaiah 43. Glory to God. Are there any divas in the house? Divas in the house? All right now, divas, dressed in humility inspired glory to god let me turn to it because hers is a little different from mine but i like this praise god amen call it out for me sister uh elder lynn mm -hmm. all right all right all right how many women in here feel that way tonight you should. You should. Because when, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're a diva. You're all of that and some. Amen. And don't worry when people say you think you're all that. You are all that with Jesus on your side. You are all that. Glory to God. This is an empowerment conference. Glory to God. Turn to Isaiah 43, verse 18. Hallelujah. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Glory to God. Now it springs up. 
Do you not perceive it? Mm. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I read from the NIV version. Do you not perceive it? We're talking about breaking away from your past, breaking away from history. But you can't break away from your history if you do not perceive it. Amen. If you can't forget those things that are behind you, you're not going to break away from your history. God is doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? In other words, do you not understand? That you cannot take your old ways and bring them into the new way? You cannot take the old ways and bring them into the new covenant? Too many people now trying to live under the law and grace at the same time. You can't do it. You cannot take a new wine and put it into old wine skin. It will not work. But do you understand it? That's what perceived means. Do you understand it? Because if you do not understand it, then your history, your past will always be there to haunt you. Amen. Paul said you got to forget those former things. You know, history is a record of events. And we all have events in our past that we want to forget. The problem is Satan is not going to just let you forget. You have to use the power that God has given you, and you have to take authority over your thoughts. And when you take authority over your thought life, you can break away from your history. Turn to your neighbor and say, we're going to break away tonight. Hallelujah. You know, in your past, glory to God. Satan is always bringing that up. He's, uh, there are a lot of things happening in your past that you want to forget. But he's always bringing, up the, always bringing it up. He keeps reminding you of the bad things that happened to you, even though it's a lot of good things happen. Satan only reminds you of the bad things that happen. That's to bring you down. You know, he might say, remind you when you used to fornicate. When you used to drink, when you used to smoke, when that supervisor on your job mistreated you, when that friend betrayed you, when that boyfriend left you, when you were always arguing with your mother, when your husband abused you, when you were molested as a child, when you were raped, when you were terminated from your job, when you went through that divorce, he always wants to remind you of the bad things. Amen? But tonight we're going to find out how to break away from that history. You know, I have a history of being in an abusive marriage for seven years. I was married to a minister who was very verbally abusive. Now, when I married him, number one, even though I had prayed, I didn't wait on God. I chose him. I chose him because when I went to church, he was sitting up in the pulpit. He was an elder. He was, uh, he was looking good. He was sounding good. He was coming to me when I come to church. He would come up to me. He would say things like, you know, I had a dream about you. <laughs> he would come up and he would say, you know, I'm praying for you. You know, he started telling me all these things, and it started just getting in my head, and I was like, well, you know, he is a minister. <laughs> and I have been in my prayer closet praying for a husband. And, you know, everything seemed to be in place. How many know that the devil will trick you? How many know that the, that the word says that the devil will come as an angel of light. And then after I got in it, with the mentality that I had and the way the church was teaching me, even though the abuse was there, soon after the marriage, I stayed in it because I was afraid if I came out of it that they were going to talk about me. 
I was afraid that if I left, God would never be able to use me because this is what the, the church I was going to, this is what they said. You don't want to get no divorce. You know, they told me all this stuff, and I didn't know any better. I'm the, by that, I was the type of person, I wanted so much of God. I wanted to please God. So I wanted to just to really be in that place where I just really felt like I was close to God. I didn't want to do anything if it was out of order. And I, they told me, so whatever they told me, that's what I did. How many know when you know better, when you learn better, you what? You do better. So because I went through that, almost lost my life, almost lost my sanity. I wrote a book about it. Since y'all said you write a book about everything. <laughs> but the name of that book is Private Hell Public Ministry because I was in a private hell. And I was a minister also. So I would come out of my private hell and come forth and try to minister to people. How many know that when you're hurting, you're going to minister hurt? When you hurt it, you minister hurt. So, you know, God delivered me out of that marriage after seven years. And, and God rest his soul. My uh, ex-husband, he's deceased. He died after we, uh, God delivered me out of it. But I'm telling you now, if you're waiting on a husband, please wait on the husband. Wait on the Boaz so you can get the Boaz and not the Bozo. Wait so you can get the Isaac and not the Ishmael. Because, see, when, when, when Ishmael came, Abraham, he wanted God to bless the Ishmael. So you get married to somebody that God didn't put you with. So you got the Ishmael. Now you want God. God, would you bless my marriage? Bless it. Would you change it? Would you change it? But, see, you, if you had waited on the promise, I'm so glad one of my spiritual daughters, I talked to her yesterday. And I had prophesied to her that God was going to send her a husband and how he was going to be. But, you know, I get busy. I hadn't talked to her in a long time. And when I talked to her yesterday, she said, I just want you to know he loves me like Christ loved the church. I could have threw that phone down and started running. Because I hear so many negative things about marriage. And it's usually because they didn't wait. Amen. So I just shared a little bit about my past. Now, I had to break away from that history because if I had not, if I had carried that abuse over into the rest of my life, I wouldn't be standing here today. Because if you carry bitterness and unforgiveness, I had forgiven him before he passed away. He got sick, and then the Holy Spirit said, go to the uh, hospital and pray for him. We weren't even together. But by the end, I knew. I repented. The way that, when I broke away is when I stopped asking God and to fix it, and I repented of what I did. I said, Lord, I didn't wait on you. And I repent for that. But if you get me out of this one, Things were so bad, I went to the doctor one time when we were together, and the doctor told me, he said, I don't know what you're going through, but if you don't leave it alone and get whatever it is, he said, you're going to have a nervous breakdown. It's, you know, when other people can see, even the doctor could tell, but I stayed in it. I'm helping somebody. There's somebody going through in their marriage tonight. It's a few people. So, y'all just be patient. I got to let the Holy Ghost use me. When you're going through in your marriage, praise God, you have to, you cannot go back and forth, back and forth, quarreling. You can't be tit for tat. You know, he say something, you say something. God did not deliver me until I started walking in the way he wanted me to walk, even in the midst of the trial, even in the midst of the storm. Then he delivered me. No, God is not for He doesn't want you to get divorced, but he also does not want his daughters to be abused. Amen. 
Somebody need to break away from that history. And forgive that husband. Forgive him. Forgive that wife, the men that are in here, that ex-wife, that ex -wife. Forgive them so you can move on. Don't be like Michael. Michael, she couldn't break away from her history. Amen? Michael was David's wife. Matter of fact, Michael was David's first wife. And everybody talks about how Michael was upset because David was dancing and he danced out of his clothes. She was upset about that. But I'm here to tell you tonight for revelation from God, she also was upset about all the mother concubines. She was upset because, see, she was the first and the only one. And Michael was so upset with David, she never did forgive him. And the Bible says she died a barren woman. If you don't break away from your past, you cannot be fruitful. She died a barren woman just because she couldn't let go. She couldn't forgive David. And she never was fruitful. Amen. Breaking away from your history, I'm going to tell you tonight, it's going to require three things. Three things, and you can write these down. Knowing your true identity, renewing your mind, and understanding God's love for you. That's what's going to help you break away. Amen. And tonight, I just want to remind you of, of your true identity. Romans 3.24 says we are justified, declared not guilty of sin. Romans 8.1 says there is no condemnation for us. Romans 8.2 says we are set free from the law of sin and death. 1 Corinthians 1.2 says we are sanctified and made acceptable in Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says we are righteous and holy in Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 22 says we will be made alive at the resurrection. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we are a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 says we receive God's righteousness. Galatians 3, 28 says we are one in Christ with other believers. Ephesians 1 and 3 says we are blessed with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Ephesians 1 and 4 says we are holy blameless and covered with God's love. Amen? Glory to God. And I'm going to end with this. 2 Timothy 2.10 says, we will have eternal glory. Amen? This is our identity, and this definitely is not all of our identity. These are just a few scriptures, and I'm sure they're taping this or something so you can get it later. If not, it's in my book. Amen? All of it is in the book. All the true, the, the scriptures for the true identity is in the book. But unless you know who you are, you cannot break away from your history. Because I'm going to tell you, when I was in my the abusive marriage, I got called many names. <laughs> many names. I still get called names. And I'm not in an abusive marriage. But, you know, you're going to always get labeled. You're going to get called names, but see, I know who I am. I know that I know that I know who I am. So it doesn't matter what you call me. Glory tonight. And tonight we're going to change some of those labels that people put on you. They put labels on you. They're calling you things today. But we're going to change those labels tonight. Some of them might be true. Amen. But how many know you can change it? God is the God of another chance and another chance and another chance. Glory to God. He said if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Now, that's not for him. That's for you. You're not confessing it because, you you know, you got to confess because he don't know what you did. You're confessing it because when you confess it, you acknowledge it to yourself that you know you did wrong. That's what that's for. Let's change some labels tonight. Amen. Now, so once you know who your, your true identity, my Bible tells me that I am above and not beneath. 
I'm the head. I'm not the tail. I'm more than a conqueror. Glory to God. I'm a child of the king. I'm a son of God. It doesn't matter whether you're a female or a male. You are a son of God. That's what the scripture says. Amen. Glory to God. I'm the apple of his eye. You got to tell yourself these things. Because, see, the thing about it is, you know, John was the disciple of Jesus. And the, John, he called himself the disciple that Jesus loved. So for years, see, people, when people laugh at you for doing things, just keep on doing it. Because it's going to catch up and you're going to have the last laugh. Because for years, I walked around and said, I'm God's favorite. I'm his favorite. I know I'm his favorite. You know, and I did say this for years. But that's what John did. John said, I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. And I started claiming the same thing. I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. And when you really understand the kind of love that God has for you, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but when you really understand the kind of love that God has for you, nothing, there's nothing that you cannot break away from. Your past can't hold you back. Because every time the devil reminds you of your past, just remind the devil of how much God loves you. And by the way, you can also remind him of his future. So to renew your mind, you're going to have to change your way of thinking. As the word says, forgetting those things that have been had, you press toward the mark of the high calling. And one of the reasons it's so hard to forget the things in the past is because people that know you are always bringing it up. People are always trying to label you. Always. And like I said, tonight we're going to get rid of some of those labels. People don't know. They don't know. They think they know you. Never let another person's behavior dictate your character. Whatever way they act, whatever way that person is, let them be that way. Let the person be that way. But you continue to be who you are. You're going to learn how to practice. I was reading Catherine Kuhlman's book. I read a lot of Catherine Kuhlman's books because I'm really fascinated about how the Lord used her in the power, and I like to operate in the power and the gifts of God because a, a church without power is just, it's just a, a gathering. It's just somewhere, you know, you got to have power. He said, you know, the word, these signs shall follow the word. So, you know, you got to have power in the church. That's what when the Bible says Jesus, when he healed them and say, and they were drawn to the church. Glory to God. Saying they were added to the church daily. Glory to God. So we got to have power in the church. But I was reading her book and her, auto, her uh, biography. And one of the things that she said, she said that, she started practicing the ministry of act like it never happened. And so I say, if it worked for her, it's okay to glean good things from people. It's okay to glean. And so I started doing the same thing. And so now I tell, I have a ministry of act like it never happened. That means that no matter what you come, you might come and do something to me. But I'm going to deal, you know, right there with it. But then I'm going to act like it never happened. I'm not going to bring it up no more. When I see you next time, I'm going to hug you. Girl, I love you with the love of Jesus. I'm going to act like it never happened. When you have the ministry of acting like it never happened, that doesn't mean that you don't want to deal with it. You might have to put some things on the back burner for a while. But for the present, you can act like it never happened because you got to understand that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And when he's putting things in your life to, that offenses and different problems and circumstances, and especially through people, it's because he's distracting you from what God wants you to do. So if you act like it never happened, I'm telling you, you got to practice it. Just act like it never happened. Amen. That makes the devil mad because what you said, bam, in your face. 
You know, you saying like, okay, devil, you got to come, uh-uh, come on with it, devil. You're going to have to do better than that because that didn't bother me. Is that all you get? Is that all you get, devil? Because what happens when you start doing that, you'll find you won't keep going through the same thing over and over again. Because what the devil is going to say is that, uh, she ain't, that ain't going to move her. Just act like it never happened. Jesus practiced, it, practiced that. See, we're supposed to be more and more like Jesus. Not another preacher, not who you see on television, not comparing yourself with one another, but we're supposed to be like Jesus. And one of the things that I like, Jesus was so cool. I really like the way Jesus did things. Jesus, he would walk up to someone and he would start, they would start telling him about something. Instead of answering the question, Jesus started talking about something else. In other words, he was like, I'm not going to even address that. I'm not going there because I know the real deal. And I have to do the same thing. Sometimes people come up and they run and they tell, apostle, apostle, and they start telling me something. But then with the discerning of the spirit, the Lord showed me the real deal. So I just don't even address that. Then I said, well, let me tell you what the Lord said. I start talking to them by what the Holy Spirit is revealing to me. If you don't have a gift of discerning, pray. But you're more than a conqueror through him that loves you. You are the head, you're not the tail. You are the queen in the royal priesthood. You are God's anointed. You already have everything that you need, and God has forgiven you of all your sins, past, present, and future. That's how you break away from your history. You know, you say, well, you know, I know God already forgave me for that. So why do you keep bringing it up? What are you talking about? You know, sometimes, sometimes you just have to, I mean, maybe you all don't do this. But sometimes I just tell the person, I say, what are you talking about? I don't even remember that, girl. What? What? That was the old me. Why are you trying to take me back to the old me? This is the new me. I'm a new creature. All things have passed away. I'm breaking away from that. That was the old me. I don't do that anymore. Hallelujah. When you know who you are, saying, you will renew your mind. And when you renew your mind, you will find out how much Jesus loves you. You can't understand how much he loves you without renewing your mind. Romans 12 and 1, it says, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you. Glory to God. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. And all that is just your reasonable service. Amen. Glory to God. Renewing of your mind. You got to renew your mind. And how do you renew your mind? You renew your mind with the word. I'm telling you how to break away from your history. It's not by uh, what you think. It's not about just keep bringing it, letting people keep bringing it up, bringing it up. You have to stop people. Don't let people bring everything to you. You have to be like that lady in the Wizard of Oz when she said, don't nobody bring me no bad news. <laughs> don't, don't receive it. You don't have to be a garbage can. Don't receive everything. It took me, I didn't learn this overnight. It took me years of going through before God poured all of this into me and I can receive it now and have a revelation. How many know that people always want to keep you in the past? Amen. Everybody doesn't want it. One of the things the Lord showed me, he said, you got to understand, everybody's not going where I'm taking you. So I'm telling you that tonight, God is taking you to a place everybody is not going to be able to go. They can't. You, some people can only go so far. And you cannot be upset with them. 
I knew they weren't on my side. Well, they was on your side, but you went, you know, you stepped out there. And all they could do is stand back here. You wanted them to step out there with you. And you look back and it, that's as far as they could go. That is as far as that person can go. But once you get out there, God will begin to bring other people that are going in the same direction. And next thing you know, you're not out there by yourself. You're looking around, and you got some on the left, and you got some on the right, and then God said, okay, now I want you to go forth. Glory to God. That's how you break away from your past. You got to break away from some people sometimes. Help me, Holy Ghost. That's the problem. You're trying to break away, but you're taking everybody with you. You can't take everybody with you. They're not supposed to go with you. God will show you. The Bible said God chose David's companions. God will show you who's supposed to be with you, who's supposed to go with you. Sometimes even relatives can't go. Amen, lights. Glory to God. But like I said, then you, you want to know three things. Your true identity, who you are, renew your mind, and then know how much. I didn't say know how much God loves you. We all know that God loves us, but I didn't always know. I'm sorry. I didn't say how much you love God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We all know that we love God, but a lot of us do not know how much he loves us. Because you're so busy looking back in the past at what you did, you feel like, how could he love me that way? Because he loves you unconditionally. The Bible said when we were yet sinners, God sent his only begotten son. We were yet sinners. We were still in our mess. He didn't wait to clean us up. He didn't wait till we got cleaned up. He loved us, and I'm here to tell you tonight, no matter where you are in your life tonight, no matter what your past has been like, God loves you. He didn't love the things that you did, but he never stopped loving you. There's nothing you can do to make God stop loving you. And there's nothing you can do to make him love you anymore, amen? Amen. <laughs> That's another subject. But we do. We try, to make, we try to do things and perform to make God love us. And God's not going to love us anymore. That's why I got, when I got that revelation, I had to write it so I can let other people know that you, you need to stop performing. And I'm still on the subject because when you realize that you don't have to perform for God anymore, that will help you break away from your history. When you realize you don't have to perform, when you realize, glory to God, that Ephesians 1 and 3 says he has given you all spiritual blessings and heavenly praises. Everything that he's going to do for you, he has already done. When you realize that you don't have to wait on your healing because you already got your healing. Everything. When you realize, thank you, Holy Ghost, when you realize that you don't have to beg God, you don't have to beg, you don't have to please, all you have to do is ask. I don't know about you, but I was locked in that religious system. And I was doing all of the wrong things. I was a good Pharisee. I was a good Sadducee. I was good. I knew the word. I could take the word and make you feel, I'm telling you, I could just t tell you, take the word, the letter killeth, but the spirit gives life. And one day God told me, he said, I want you to stop. I was getting ready to go to Chicago. I was moving back to Chicago for a few years. I thought it was going to be permanent, but it ended up being a few. But God said, before you go to Chicago, I want you to lose that religious spirit. I was like, what? Is that you, Lord? He said, I want you to lose that religious spirit. He said, because you will not be fruitful. 
I can't use you if you take that religious spirit with you. And I began to look at my life and I began to see I was doing what I had been taught. But that's no excuse because we got the word and we can get into the word for ourselves. And we can find out religion is a system. God doesn't want you to be religious. But he just wants you to have a relationship with him. You don't have to beg. You don't have to plead. You don't have to be dressed up. If you got your pajamas on, just go to the Lord. If you don't have no makeup on, just go to the Lord. Oh, you don't have to dress. You don't have to do all of that. I'm telling you, I'm going all over wherever God is sending me, telling people, stop performing for the Lord. Don't perform. Rest in him. He said, I want you to rest in me. And I'm practicing what I'm preaching, and it's working for me. When I received that revelation of how much God loves me and I didn't have to perform, I began to favor, just began to pour out in my life. So much favor. And the same thing is going to happen to you because that's grace. Amen. When you understand grace, favor follows. And that's what God wants you to do now. God is saying, I want to pour myself out on you like a drink offering. I want to pour myself out. I want to pour myself out. I want to pour myself out. But can you receive? Can you receive? Glory to God. God loves you just as much as he loved the woman at the well. He loves you just as much as he loved the woman that was caught in adultery. He loves you just as much as he loved Mary Magdalene with all those demons. He loves you just as much as he loves Jesus. How many can believe that tonight? Glory to God. When you know how much he loves you, you can walk in the grace that he has given you. Amen? And you no longer have to perform to, put, to please Jesus. He will take you just the way that you are. Some of us are stuck in the past because we're trying to live under the law instead of grace. Amen? You can't break away from your history trying to live under the law. The law was given to point us, amen, to the New Testament. The law was given to point us to Jesus. The law was not given for us to try to keep the law. Moses brought the law, but grace came with Jesus Christ. And I know some of you all are doing it because I did it too until I got free. But now when, that I'm free and I know that I'm living under grace and I'm no longer live, trying to live under the law. See, it's, it's not your fault because some of us preachers were preaching it to you. But I repented already for the ones that I preached the wrong thing to. I repented because, see, one day I got to stand before God and give account for every word that has come out of my mouth. But I'm free. Let me hear you say, I'm free. I'm free. Glory to God. When you really receive God's grace, you let go of the past, saints. That's, the, that's all it's going to take tonight. When you really receive his grace, you will let go because you will renew your mind. You will know who you are. You will know how much he loves you. That's grace. That's all. That's all I've told you about tonight is grace. I just, it just came under a different subject, but it's all related to grace because there's nothing that you have to perform to do those are things that you want to do those are things when you really love him you want to do right you're not going to want to sin shall we con continue in sin though grace the brown god forbid you're not going to want to sin you're going to want to do the right thing glory to god amen praise god When you really receive God's grace, you let go of the past. And you can tell yourself, if it had not been.
been, let me hear you say, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? The young lady that was singing, I don't know if she's still here, that was talking about confessing uh, she had wanted to commit suicide. Are you here? God kept you here for such a time as this. You were not the only one that wanted to commit suicide. Many, many, many people now today in 2014, but your testimony is so anointed that yokes are destroyed when you give that testimony. And you couldn't have given that testimony if you had not gone through. I said gone through because he brought you out. Keep letting the Lord use you like that. As long as you continue to hold on to the past, men and women of God in here, you will never be able to walk in the things that God has called you to do. Amen? Holding on to the past will cause you, like I said earlier, to be unfruitful. And everybody wants to be fruitful. Everybody, we want to please the Lord, but it's not with our performance. It's about doing the things that he has asked us to do, and that is walk in the light. Pray. Amen? You still want to pray, but it's the way that you pray. You still want to read your word, but you don't have to be uh, hold yourself in chains. And you don't have to say, well, I didn't read the word today. I know something bad is going to happen. It's not like that. You read your word, you're going to read your word because you want to read your word. As you draw near to him, he's going to continue to draw near to you. But tonight, I want to pray for you all. Praise God. Because it's time to enter into his rest. Amen? It's time, the Bible says, you got to labor to enter into his rest. Because you just can't enter into his rest because the devil is going to keep bringing people and things. and not, so You got to work it. You got to say, hey, and when I say labor, I mean by praying, by reading his word. That's how you labor. I'm not talking about just things that you got to get up and perform. See, when you love God, you want to read his word. Can I, can I get somebody to help me down? And can I get some oil? Bless oil, please. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. I'm not going to be long, but I must obey the Holy Ghost. Is it okay, um, Elder, Elder? Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Deliverance in the house. Let me hear you say, deliverance is in the house. Deliverance is in the house. Deliverance is in the house. And if you believe that, don't be ashamed. I'm going to get two altar calls. The first one is going to be for anyone here that has never accepted Christ as their Savior. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, please do so tonight. Because you will never break away from your past um, on your own. Amen. Glory to God. Well, good. We have a, a saved full house. And that's usually, it's usually that way when you have conferences. People that usually come to conferences are they're hungry and thirsty. They want more of God, more of God. It's Friday night. And I remember, remember back in the day on Friday night, I was oh, in the yeah. club. I wasn't going to no con conference. You, you going where? Uh-uh, girl, I'll see you later. <laughs> but when you get hungry and when you get thirsty after the things of God, this is what you do. You come together. Forsake not to assemble yourself with the brethren. You come together because together we, divided, we fall. But together we stand. Amen. And God, one of the last prayers that he prayed, Jesus prayed, his father, 
I pray that they become one. We still haven't gotten there yet. We're not there yet. But I believe we're getting closer and closer. Amen. That it's not about denomination. It's not about color. It's not about any of this. It's not about doctrine. It's not about whether you speak in tongues or I speak in tongues. It's not about any of that. It's about love. Love is the common denominator. What's love got to do with it? Everything. Love has everything to do with it. All right. I said I was going to pray. Here we go. This altar call right here. I want to ask anyone that just wants prayer. You don't have to tell me what your past is. If the Holy Spirit don't say something, you don't have to say anything. But if you want to come up and get totally, just break away, totally cut the cord, totally get it destroyed, the, tonight is your night. The anointing is here. And I'm just going to pray with you and agree with you. And after tonight, you will not be bothered with that anymore. Thus said the Lord. You don't have to tell me what it is. Just, just come on up. And I'm going to ask, also ask the uh, assigned ministers that have been assigned to the altar, if they would come up too. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is why, look around you. This is why the devil tried to kill me when I was a child. This is why the devil tried to steal my eyesight. This is why the devil wanted to give me a nervous breakdown. Look around. But what God has for you is for you. Everyone has a purpose in their life. Everyone in here has a purpose. I know what my purpose is. It's what I'm doing tonight. Do you know what your purpose is? Thank you, Holy Ghost. Truth is I'm weak. No strength to No tears to cry. Even here. 